Announcements first off, uh, we do have a, uh, uh, the print in your bulletin is the uh, scriptures for next week from Matthew 5 and Revelation 7. If you want to read ahead on that. Uh, our church is participating in baby uh, bottle boomerang, so uh, please pick up the baby bottle if you haven't already. Fill it with whatever you want, checks, money, dollars, coins, something to give, uh, give back to the uh, Life Choices Center. We can do that. The fall Bible study continues uh, in, with Simon Peter, and uh, this, uh, you can either join online through uh, Zoom link. Uh, just let us know. We'll get, the, get that to you. Uh, or uh, at either 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. Uh, also here at the church. Uh, council meeting uh, next week to finish up the last that we need for our charge conference is November 1st. Uh, so bring your own lunch. We will eat at a distance, but we'll enjoy each other's company as we eat. And of course, charge conference is going to be on November 7th, but that's going to be mostly just a yep. drop off and 
He you need to, to drop it off. <laughs> yep. we'll, we'll just pray about it. Right. So, my, much different from what we've had in the past, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And he, our church is also giving $100 each month. This one uh, month is to uh, Brand and Wine Lunch Program. Uh, next month will be to the Heifer International. Are there other announcements? Uh, two, two things, Byron. Um, on the baby bottles, um, two weeks from today, we'll, we'll wrap that up um, on, uh, let's see, that would be uh, the uh, 8th, November 8th, I think it is. And then also on the Samaritan's Purse, um, Norma has that all coordinated, but the boxes have not come in yet. So uh, hopefully they'll come in this week and pick up the boxes next week. So uh, we appreciate your involvement in that as well. And you can get boxes at... Um, Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. Oh, yeah. okay. They got the boxes, okay. and they got okay. the plastic boxes. And okay. I always like the plastic boxes because that's something they can store this stuff in when they get it. There you go. Yeah. So, Pastor, I will check down there because I thought there was some left over. I my, my uh, well, uh, I, you did already look? Yes. Um, uh, Norma has a um, one yeah. church, Fairland, the United States Church is doing it. So we took those boxes uh, to Fairland. Okay. And it shows okay. waiting on to come in. So. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the, now the Samaritan's Purse, uh, of course, you've got a flyer here, and uh, we don't have a video, but uh, yeah, we no, we don't. No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> it okay. didn't work out, but uh, we don't, we'll, we'll get it next time. Uh, uh, have it on that. Also, if you uh, have the little cards, here, here's the one I kind of like. If you would go online and download your uh, ticket you put on your box, it gives you a, a code so when they scan it, They'll send you back an email, and you'll know where it went to. Oh, that's, that's, okay. kind of that's kind of a neat thing to know as well. So I know ours went to Africa last year, wow. uh, something okay. like that. One the other year went to Slovenia, and we got even got I put an, our address in it. Even got a nice, nice note back from an orphanage out there. So, so there was just some neat things we could do. Any other announcements we need to bring up? Any special? Yes. Yeah, my birthday be tomorrow. Is it? Yeah. Well, we're looking for birthdays, so we want to sing happy birthday to you. Anybody else have a birthday you want to sing? Okay, it's tomorrow. Okay, Harold. Right there. Happy, Harold. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. How about anniversaries? Seeing none, uh, let us uh, prepare our hearts for uh, service with a, a moment of silence today. Heavenly Father, your spirit is upon us today. We ask you uh, to bring it to our life and to our lives today. Let us uh, uh, have our hearts open. Lord, our, our, our presence is here, both here and uh, on Facebook, Lord. We just ask you now to uh, uh, be with us. These things we ask in Christ's name. Now let's stand and welcome the Spirit. <laughs> Sunday we sing that uh, wonderful song, praying, asking for God's Holy Spirit to fall afresh on us. But notice the purpose for that. It's to melt me, mold me, shape me, use me. That's our prayer this morning as we welcome the Holy Spirit into our midst that uh, God will use the Spirit to mold us, shape us, and use us. Amen. As we remain standing, uh, let us turn to our call to worship. It's printed on the, uh, in the book or on the screen. Join me. The Lord reigns, let the people tremble. The Lord sits enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth quake, let the Lord is great, resign, and exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and wonderful name. Holy is the Lord, mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. 
Moses and Aaron's footstool. Holy is the Lord, Moses and Aaron were among God's priests. Samuel also was among those who called on God's name. They he cried to the Lord and answered them. He spoke to them in pillar or cloud. They kept God's testimony to the statutes by the idea. They were a living God. Then, God. when an adventure is a remarkable one, they extolled the Lord our God and worshiped at his holy mountain. Surely the Lord our God also the Lord. Now let us unite this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge his way from the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. This morning comes from First uh, Thessalonians chapter two, uh, first eight verses. Paul is uh, writing this letter to a, a group of Christians that he had visited before, and he is uh, uh, opening his letter here and is, is, is uh, confirming what uh, took place there. So in verse one it says this: "You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results." We had previously suffered and had been treated outrageously by the Phil by in Philippi, as you know. But uh, with the help of our Lord, we dared to tell you uh, his uh, gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does uh, not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak to uh, as approved by that are try, not trying to uh, move something there. On, on the contrary, we speak as those approved by uh, God and are not trying to um, please people, but, uh, but God, uh, who, tr uh, who tests our hearts. We know we are never uh, used flattery, nor uh, did we put a mask over to cover up uh, greed. God is our witness. We were not looking uh, for praise from people, not from you or anyone else, even though as disciples of Christ, we could, uh, could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for his chil her children, so we care for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Word of God for the people of God. Thank be to God. First uh, hymn this morning is Holy, Holy, Holy. Oh, my God. 
As we uh, offer our gifts to God today, as you know, we place them in the box in the back. So we don't have to pass the collection plate yet. Someday we will again. But uh, uh, let us uh, bow in prayer and dedicate those gifts that we've given. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the uh, uh, time you, what you've given us. Lord, we just give you uh, praise. Uh, uh, we thank you for the gifts that uh, you have brought. Uh, Bestowed upon us, and Lord, now we just return back part of what you've given to us so well, that we may love our neighbor as we love ourselves. These things we ask in Christ's name. Now let's do the doxology. <laughs> to our next hymn is More Love to Deal with Christ. So good to have all of us gathered today. Good, good group we have gathered uh, together today. And uh, um, welcome Bob and Linda back from Florida. You guys got back late last night. And hope you get some rest today. And good trip, I guess. Uh, both of you. So okay, good, good. And Harold and Roberta, you guys have gotten moved in and doing well at your new place. So um, Harold catches a good, good size. I, I envy you for that, Harold. So uh, pretty nice size bass. So uh, that's that's good. Um, um, we are. Um, Blessed this morning in uh, several ways, uh, but um, joys, thankfulness, thanksgiving this morning. Somebody got good, good to share with us. Um, 
Congratulations this morning to Mary Jo. Uh, you may have seen in the newspaper, uh, Mary Jo got a very nice award for uh, uh, extension homemaker work, and you've done that for me. I know you don't do it for the recognition, Mary Jo, but uh, it is good to, uh, and, and you do, you are such a worker, such a community uh, outreach person, so uh, we uh, thank you for all that you do. Um, also, um, everybody take uh, a notice this morning of our, our new, uh, what are you going to call it? Gary and Myron? I don't know. Communications booth or uh, something like that. Okay, uh, yeah, our, our new communications booth back there, and um, we will be installing all of our new equipment. And uh, Benny Carr made that for us, and thanks so much to Benny, um, his uh, skills and gifts that he made for that. Just beautiful, uh, and will be a, a great addition to our church. So, uh, yes, Mary, Mary Jo made the curtain around. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I noticed the curtain, so Mary Jo, so. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Yes. Um, and uh, Powers family. Avery, I did not see in the paper. How did the, how did it go this week? And your friend? Um, it was good. We did make it to stage, but we had a lot of good work. Okay. Good for you. Congratulations, anyway, to you and your friends. So, so uh, 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 thank you for all your hard work on that. I know that uh, you guys are uh, uh, training very, very hard. That's a difficult thing, but uh, congratulations for all the good you've done. So, um, other, uh, did Mary? My COVID test came back negative. Yes, uh, Mary, uh, congratulations on that. So Mary has had, Gary said this morning, two types of flu? I think the test is full. Oh, <laughs> that happens, that happens. Quite so. frankly, I tested positive for A and B in March, and that is a rarity. And for me to test positive for A and B again just a few months later, I think something's a little, little bit of a head scratcher, isn't it, Mary? So, yeah, so okay. either that or it's just me. I don't know. Okay, but, okay. But I have—I really didn't feel bad this week. I just, but with COVID, you never know. So I stayed at home. Yeah, I worked from home, and um, uh, congratulations on that negative COVID test. So uh, uh, that is always, boy, so important these days. And uh, uh, thanks, everybody, for yes, yes, Gail. Uh, Tony would like prayer. She said a very difficult week last oh, week. Oh, really? Very difficult. She just car accident. Oh, my. Yeah, miscommunication on her um, electric bill. Oh, okay. A $900 mistake. Oh, oh. oh my gosh, Gail. Oh, wow. Oh, so boy. She, said, she said she really, really appreciates prayer. Absolutely, Gail. So, um, car wreck, Colleen, uh, damage Didn't though? get her anything. Okay. Uh, just a lady had uh, backed into her. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, that's very upsetting, though. So. A hassle. So, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, you bet, uh, Gail, for Colleen Coyle. So, uh, Lord be with Colleen. Uh, we, we miss Colleen, don't we? And uh, I talk with Colleen pretty often, and she is such a joy. Oh, my gosh, just full of faith in every way. So, uh, yes. I've been trying to stop every Sunday before I hit the church to uh, uh, check in her if she needs anything. That's great, Gail. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Colleen, is, uh, she is such a joy. So, uh, others this morning, special joys. Elizabeth, good to have you with us this morning. I, I saw Elizabeth this morning. Uh, great, welcome, Grace. Um, no. <laughs> You're, you're just what Grace was just a few years ago, Elizabeth. So, uh, uh, so, so good to have you with us this morning, Elizabeth. So, uh, yes, Gloria, yes. Today from afar, we celebrate our son's 46th birthday. 46th birthday. Oh, boy, Gloria. So, my heart to believe in it. So, wow. Happy birthday to him in uh, California. And um, you guys get to go out every year or two or whatever, something like that. We have. We didn't this year because of COVID. Absolutely. So, absolutely. But happy birthdays are always great. Anyway, so happy birthday to your son. What's his first name? Adam. Adam. Okay. Okay. Great name for for the first son. So, okay. So, all right. Happy birthday to Adam. So, others this morning, special joys. Um, Roberta? You know, we are very, very uh, blessed right now to have Dana and Chuck living with us. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, they've sold their house in... Uh, uh, Portsville. Okay. And they're building in Noblesville, and they're also by the end of 2023, they're going to have a place in Mexico. Uh, they're building a, a place there, and really, they want to do ministry work there. I'll be darn, Roberta. Uh, it's so badly over there. Okay. Yes. Um, and they want to go and do that when they. When they get built over there, but it's oh. such a pleasure having them with us, and of course they'll be there all winter while we're in Florida. So okay, okay, Roberta, okay. Um, Dan and Chuck both are just uh, absolutely they they just exude faith in everything that they both of them. So uh, such joys I know, and so uh, uh, Lord be with them in the building, and what what a great thing being ministry in Mexico, and 
I can just see Dana just with a smile on her face, reaching out, and uh, Chuck too. So, um, so uh, okay, joy to have him with you. I know we're uh, in here also. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, others this morning. So, uh, okay. Um, yes, uh, Terry. Yes. Uh, I, I know I need to marry before my spouse because I, I really haven't been happy for a real long time. Okay, Terry. And okay. I want to be happy again. Okay, Terry. We understand. Uh, Terry, can we do something this morning? Can, can, can we just have a prayer just for you for that? Can we do that? So and, and include your mother as well. So okay, let's let's have a prayer for Terry. Lord God, we just thank you for Terry for his coming to church this morning and being faithful in his faith and uh, be with him, Lord. Um, just set up the circumstances in his life so that he can find uh, genuine happiness, and that will include you. We know that. So just guide Terry in the direction we have him to go and. Uh, be with Jacob, his son, also, and all his family. And we also lift up Phyllis uh, for your healing power to be with her. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. God be with you, Terry. Um, others this morning that we need to pray for, I know, um, um, the death of uh, Vonda, Jeanette Archibald's cousin, um, last week. Um, Jeanette has had really, really tough several months. Four deaths in her family, including her brother, Earl. Um, so uh, the Lord be with uh, Jeanette and all Vonda's family and uh, close cousins. Um, they've been there for each other, so the Lord be with Jeanette and all her family. Um, also, um, for um, um, Susan, uh, Robin, and uh, Gloria, for you, uh, for Susan, for the uh, uh, death of her daughter, tragic death of her daughter, you guys are still uh, ministering to Susan. I know you are, so the Lord be with you. Um, Pat Horgan's um, aunt is um, battling cancer in Ohio, and so Pat has been going back and forth and helping out her aunt, who is very uh, precious to her. Um, Herb and, and Norma's, uh, Herb's sister and Norma's sister-in-law, Polly Hodap, um, uh, the widow of uh, Bishop Hod Hodap in our annual conference. Uh, she is uh, not doing well. Um, Polly is, I believe, uh, Herb and Norma, uh, 94 maybe, I'm not sure, Norma, Herb, what, uh, uh, but she is uh, um, not doing well. Um, made a little bit of progress, I know some people, but uh, the Lord be with, uh, with Polly also. Um, I was able to talk with uh, John and Lou um, Wable yesterday, and uh, always enjoy talking with John, and, and, and they're doing fine, staying in, um, but the Lord be with them, and um, they miss us, and we miss them, so uh, the Lord be with John and Lou, and, and all their family as well. So, um, others this morning for special prayers for Bert? I would like very, very special prayers for my youngest daughter, Sandy. Okay, okay, yes, for Sandy. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Her father got to talk with her for just a little while yesterday for the first time in, what, three yeah. years. And she is so, so, so full of anger okay. and pain. Mm. And mm. it's been ten times worse since the death of her son. And, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, it's just, she just, she just doesn't realize that if she would turn this over to God, mm -hmm. It would help her so much, but she doesn't believe in God in the least. And uh, uh, she is so estranged from the family. She just well, the Lord be with Sandy, Roberta, and um, oh my gosh, it's been so hard for me to absolutely turn her over to the Lord and leave her alone. Absolutely, um, she won't. Turn. She hasn't talked to me in almost three years. Oh my gosh, uh, Roberta! Oh my gosh, um, the answer is in is to, is to turn her life over to the Lord and. Uh, Yes, it is. Um, that is the source of true happiness and uh, get beyond the anger and the hatred. So, uh, the Lord be with Sandy, Roberta, and Harold, and uh, boy, just be with her and uh, replace that anger with, with love. Um, Thank God she at least talked to her father. Yes, okay, okay. That, that's, a, that's a little bit of a breakthrough right there. Celebrate that breakthrough. So, yes, and uh, Earl, does it here? Yes. My friend Leslie Seidler did. Uh, they know she has to have surgery. We'll tear that abdominal. Okay. It's scar tissue pushing against it because uh, of her previous surgery, but you was taking her over to the Cleveland Clinic. Oh, boy. We're going to try to get that uh, surgery scheduled right around Thanksgiving time. That, that should take care of the problem. Okay, Earl. Okay. Well, good. Right now she's going through therapy and it's very painful. Okay. Well, yeah, I can imagine. So, okay, we're with Leslie and uh, um, God bless Judy for step, stepping up and uh, being ministry, help, helping her friend as well. So, okay, Earl, thank you for that. So, um, others this morning for special prayers? Mary Jane? John Joan Clark's uh, grandson, Lachlan, passed away. He's only 17. And oh, my gosh. Unexpectedly. So oh, my goodness. And, of course, their mom and dad, his mom and dad. 
Okay, 17 year old yeah. death. Um, Lachlan, his name. Lachlan, okay, the Lord be with uh, that family, Mary Jo. Thank you. So, yes, I think I saw another, another hand. Up. Yes, Fred, yes. Well, I was just going to mention the same thing. Uh, Lachlan's parents, Lori and Shane, were married here. So oh, okay. I'll be darned. Okay. Uh, that's, boy, the worst thing. I shouldn't say the worst thing, but um, such a incredibly difficult thing, death of a 17 year old. So the Lord be with them. With them uh, and connection to our church. So, um, the Lord be with them. Healing power to be with them. And Fred, I haven't mentioned about Gary, your brother Gary, for quite a while either. Gary, for his uh, um, stroke that he had and, and the uh, Parkinson's, and the Lord be with Gary, Fred. So. He's uh, down at uh, Cypress Run. Also. He is a Cypress Run. So, okay. Okay. Good, good to know that then, Fred. So, okay. Good. Um, others this morning, special prayers? Oh, well, I, I know. Um, boy, uh, Bob, uh, Bob's daughter, youngest daughter, Gail is having surgery on the 27th. That's on Tuesday then, isn't it, Bob? So the Lord be with Gail and um, provide a successful surgery, Bob, and a, and a quick recovery. And, and the Lord be with you and Mary as well uh, and all your family and thinking and praying about Gail. And I, it's in hospitals anymore. You just can't can't be there by their side like like you like to. But uh, the Lord be with you all. Okay. Think of the thing that's in the way Oh my goodness. Okay, Bob. The Lord be with Gail. And uh, we'll just continue to pray for her, especially on the 27th. So, okay. Anybody else this morning? Special prayers? Let's bow and go to our God in prayer. Holy God, we thank you this morning for the glory of your presence among us in this holy room that we call a sanctuary. Stained glass windows and crosses and the beauty. That beauty is reflective of your love and your presence for us. Thank you for blessing us in countless ways. And we continue to lift up those that have been mentioned for special prayer this morning. And I want to just lift up especially Sandy to you, Lord, that you would soften her heart and be with her to replace that anger um, with love that can come only from you. Uh, that's the answer. But we just ask for a breakthrough for Sandy. Thank you that she's able to talk with Harold um, this week, first time in three years. That's a beginning of something. May it be the beginning of something wonderful. Uh, in Sandy's life and all her family. So many others we've mentioned this morning for special prayers, for healing power, be with them and uh, just provide your presence and your love. Uh, those who are hurting, send them your comfort. Those who are facing surgery, send them success. Uh, those who are in recovery, send them steady progress to getting back on their feet and back to uh, normal life once again. Lord, we continue to pray for uh, the COVID outbreak in our world, especially in our nation, that seems to be um, going into another surge. We just pray that that is not the case, but uh, may we continue to, uh, to be faithful and diligent in terms of watching ourselves and mask wearing and distancing and all those kind of things that it takes uh, to live with this virus, um, which we know that we must do. Um, bless our voices together now as we pray as you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And let us uh, sing together, Jesus loves the little children. Love divine, all love excelling. Oh. 
Scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 46. Praise commandment. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply. From that day on, no one dared ask him any more questions. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. Let's pray. Almighty God, be with us this morning as we seek to apply these holy words into our daily lives. Guide us, encourage us, bless us as we go on that journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture this morning takes place um, in Jerusalem. During the feast of Passover, Jesus had traveled with his disciples to Jerusalem. Uh, This was sometime between the days of Palm Sunday and Good Friday. And you need to remember that Jesus conducted just about all of his three-year public ministry in Galilee, 80 to 90 miles north of Jerusalem. Uh, Kind of a little bit out in hinterland, going from town to town, that kind of thing. And uh, there were religious leaders up there, of course, But, uh, you know, they're out of the way and so on. And and they, Sadducees and the Pharisees up there, they were constantly trying to trip Jesus up, discredit him. Uh, But now Jesus is in Jerusalem. This is the Mecca. This is is where all the action is in terms of the Jewish faith. And so you had the, the elites of the elites of the leaders of the Jewish faith, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they thought they had Jesus cornered. And so, uh, they got together, said you see some Pharisees. They put in a little bit, what I'm going to call a full court press on that Jesus, trying to pepper him with questions and trip him up. And so, first thing was, the Pharisees were first up to bat, and one of them said, uh, Teacher, good teacher, um, is it right that we should pay taxes to Caesar? Jesus didn't hesitate. Well, give me a coin. Whose picture's on the coin? Caesar's picture's on the coin. Yeah, I'll render to Caesar what Caesar, render to God what is God. Um, Jesus passed that test. It was the Sadducees that came next. And, and the Sadducees differed from the Pharisees in that the Sadducees did not believe in eternal life. They did not believe in heaven. They did not believe in the resurrection. But they knew that Jesus did. And, and the Jewish law said that um, if you have a husband married to a wife and the husband dies, if the husband had a brother, the brother, it was his duty to take the widow as his wife. So the Sadducees, they thought, oh, we're going to get Jesus on this one. And they said, teacher, uh, good teacher, um, what if there's a... a, a 
a man who's a husband has a wife, he dies, and his brother takes the wife, and he dies with seven brothers, and they go on, on down like that. So they, all the seven, seven brothers were married to this same woman. Um, in the resurrection, in eternal life, whose wife will she be? <laughs> wow, how can you get out of that one? Jesus said, wait, wait, no, 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 no. It's not that way um, in heaven above. You don't give and take in marriage. It's not that way. It doesn't even apply at all. So Jesus passed that test. Then the Pharisees, uh, it was their turn once again, and, and, and Scripture says that they, they got a lawyer, you know. You wanna, if you want to ask a, a sharp question, you know, um, you get a lawyer. This lawyer, Scripture says, was an expert in the law. And so he, he came up with what he thought was the question to really trip Jesus up. This was his question. This was his question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, there were 613 commandments in the Old Testament, um, including the Ten Commandments that we know and, 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 and think about it. If Jesus lifted up one of these, what does it do for the others? It kind of puts those others as second-class commandments, right? If, if you pick out one of the Ten Commandments that's the most important, what's it say about the others? They're not as important, right? It would be a little bit like if, if parents had ten children, and you ask them, which of your children do you love the most, <laughs> right? If you say that, you've just, you've just pushed the others down, down on the list. So they said, oh, we got Jesus on this one. Jesus didn't hesitate. He did not hesitate one bit. He answered directly. This was his answer. This was his answer. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and all the prophets hang on these two commandments. So Jesus said it. He said it right there. Everything. Everything in the prophets. Everything in the entire Bible. Every word of Jesus that he spoke, everything is contingent upon these two commandments. Love the Lord your God, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. These were not new commandments. Um, they were in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6, 5, you are to love the, good Lord, the Lord your God is one. Uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Um, and then also love your neighbor as yourself. It was in Leviticus 19, 18. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What was new what was linking these two commandments together, one being contingent on the other. Um, so we're going to see if we can get a little bit practical this morning about how we actually live out these commandments. So um, how do we love the Lord our God with everything that we have, everything that we are? We're doing it this morning, aren't we? Um, you know, we sing, we sing the, the hymns, um, we pray the prayers, we read the scripture, we give our offerings, we have a sermon. Uh, we are focused on the Lord's presence and love for us this morning. We are loving the Lord our God. Uh, hopefully, with everything that we have during this hour, we do it in everyday life, don't we? By um, our devotion time, you know, our prayer time at home. Um, we walk with the Lord. We know He is always with us, and so we, we take glory in His presence with us. Um, we love the Lord our God with everything we have at that. But, but really, when you get down to brass tacks, um, how do you love the Lord your God? Well, you can't just you can't separate out loving God without also loving your neighbor, right? One depends upon the other. It's a little bit like what's the old song? Love and marriage, love and marriage go together like a horse and carriage. You cannot separate. You can't have one without the other. You can't love God unless you love your neighbor. You just can't. First John 4:20 makes this abundantly clear. Abundantly clear. If you say you love God but do not love your neighbor, that person is a liar. For if we don't love people, we can see, how can we say we love God when we cannot see? So um, anybody who says they love God, I love God, I love God, if they don't extend that into actually loving the neighbor, um, it's not, it's, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean a thing. You've got to extend that love of God out to love your neighbor. So how do we love our neighbors? Um, Jesus is very, very clear there as well. You love your neighbor as yourself. The same way that we love ourselves, we're to love our neighbors. Now, as, as I've thought about um, this commandment this, 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 this week about loving ourselves, it, it's kind of come to me that um, it, it, it's something that we, we probably cannot just presuppose that everybody loves themselves. Um, life is tough these days for a lot of people. Addictions can come in. Um, 
family dysfunction can come in, struggles with relationships can come in, um, whatever kinds of problems can come in. So there's a lot of people in this world who don't love themselves, right? I mean, that's just the way life is for a lot of people. So what do they do? What do they do? Well, here's what you do. For all of us, loving ourselves is not dependent, should not be dependent upon what we say about ourselves. It should not be dependent about what we think about ourselves. Loving ourselves is dependent on what God says about us. Um, in Jeremiah, God says in Jeremiah, I, I have loved you and will continue to love you with an everlasting love. God's love for us never stops. Genesis 1 and 2, um, the creation story says that God created human beings, Adam and Eve, in his own image. You and I have the stamp of God's image upon us, on our very, our, our very beings, our hearts, our souls, our minds. God loves us, and that has to be uh, the focus, uh, the bottom line, about our loving ourselves. If we don't love ourselves that way, then you can't get into the other, right? We have, we have to recognize that God loves us. Then we love ourselves because God loves us. us. And you know what happens when, when you're firmly in the place where you recognize where you really do love yourself because God loves you? It, it, it frees us up. It frees us up from having to focus on ourselves and allows us the ability to then focus outward onto loving other people. You see how that works? You know, when you really love yourself, you don't have to think about it. I love myself. You don't say that every day. No, you just, you know you're, you love yourself. You have a, a not, not a good self-esteem, but a good God esteem because God loves you. And that will allow you then to turn your gaze upon other people and to love them. Now, loving other people, this is something that's often kind, kind of tough as well. Um, loving other people does not mean that you just, you just do everything that they want, that you do just, you affirm them everything, everything. It does not mean that you just give them whatever they want and they, you know, affirm them whatever they're doing. Um, um, I think of it as, as parents with a child. If you had a seven-year-old um, who announced at the supper table one night that, you know what, mom and dad, um, I'm not going to eat anything except chocolate ice cream. You know, um, I, I really don't like vegetables. I don't like fruits, I don't like anything else. I'm just going to eat chocolate ice cream. What would the parents say? Would the parents say, okay, son or daughter, seven-year-old, we'll go get the tub of ice cream out. You can just eat chocolate ice cream, breakfast, uh, dinner, and supper, lunch, everywhere. That, that's where you to lay, right? No, of course you wouldn't do that. Why wouldn't you do that? Because you love that child. Because you love them. And so you set that child down and say, listen, young man or young lady, um, you can have some chocolate ice cream, maybe give you a little bit of ice cream every day, but, but you got to eat some vegetables, you got to eat some fruit, you got to eat some protein, you got to eat some grains. If you don't, your body's not going to be healthy. You know, you have to take care of yourself. We're saying that because we love you, right? That's, that's, that's the way that it works, you know? We love somebody because we speak the truth in love to them. We love them in a way that will guide them in a the direction of being functional persons in our world, contributing members of society, but even more important than that, so that they will then develop a faith in God and they will grow in that faith in God. I can, I can um, just state from my own experience that um, the people in my life who have loved me the most have been the ones who have uh, challenged me. Um, they, they've encouraged me, right? And they've, you know, they've said good things about me at times, but, but the, the things I, I mostly appreciate, the things I, I mostly needed um, is when people have um, gently lovingly spoken the truth to me about maybe directions I was going that was not, not really good. Um, for example, in the United Methodist Church, um, for the training of pastors, um, for the full, full ordination process, you do have to go to seminary um, and get a degree in, in the seminary. But the other part of the training that you get, uh, that not everybody does this, but ideally everybody would, is that um, you serve a church. And, and the church helps to teach you and to grow you in the faith. Um, I have an eternal debt of gratitude <laughs> to the Spartanburg United Methodist Church <laughs> over in Randolph County. Um, I went there um, beginning seminary and served that church as pastor for four years while I was in seminary until I graduated. And uh, those people love me beyond <laughs> anything that I could ever imagine. And you know how they love me the most? <clears throat> They, they took on the responsibility of helping to teach me how to be a pastor. 
And so they spoke the truth in love to me. There were times when, you know, it was a little bit hard, but you, you, you had to hear that. You know, people can see, they can guide you in a direction you need to go. And I think about so many times they love me by, by pointing out to me, speaking the truth in love to me. I think about the times when uh, one year we had um, struggles uh, getting someone to be at nominating committee time, like we are now in the fall of the year, uh, somebody could be Sunday school superintendent. Just did any, anybody want to step up and do that? So I went to a young lady named Pat, and uh, Pat had not been a leader in the church, but I said, Pat, would you consider you know, being Sunday school superintendent? She prayed about it. She said, yeah, I, 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 I will do that. Celebrated that. Thank you, Pat, for doing that. Um, Barbara Berg and I met the church had a absolutely um, wonderful and healthy Sunday school program. Three very, very healthy, large adult classes. Um, senior high class, junior high class, all the elementary grades, um, down to nursery. Very, very healthy um, worship attendance in that church at that time was in the 70s. Sunday school attendance was often in the 80s. More people at Sunday school than in worship. The only church I've ever had that was like that way. But um, Pat, in her really taking this job to heart, Kennedy one day, she said, you know, Steve, I'm looking at our adult Sunday school classes, and, and I think they've become too ingrown. Um, you know, everybody there, you know each other in your class, but they really don't interact with each other outside the class very much. You see, this is my idea. What do you think? Um, I, I think we'd like to invite everybody just to switch classes. You know, everybody just to switch classes, get in a new class, and I heard that, and I, you know, I'm not sure, I wasn't sure about it, but I, I wanted to affirm pass. Okay, well, let's do that, Pat. So we stood up next Sunday and uh, in church and said, everybody in Sunday school, adult Sunday school, we want you to switch classes, you know, do a round robin, go to another class, experience another teacher, that kind of thing. And it was that week when uh, Larry Pritchard, Larry was a retired state policeman, came to me and he said, Steve, um, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. He said, if you do this, <laughs> if you really do a mandate that people switch classes, you're going to ruin the Sunday school. And then he said, those people in those classes, they've been, they've been together for 20, 30, some 40, 50 years together. They've raised their children together. They've been at the hospital when they each had surgery. They've had picnics together in each other's houses. They share their lives together. Um, you can't break that up. It won't work. And I thought about it and I said, oh my gosh, how could I and Pat have ever gotten that wrong? And so we went the next Sunday and said, you know what? We encourage you to stay in the classes you've been in, you know, do, do what you can to get to know other people outside the classes, but, 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 I, but I appreciate Larry Pritchard speaking the truth to me in love. That, that was wise. That was valuable. I've never done that again, encouraging people just to change classes because they've gotten too ingrown, you know. You need, that, you need that special love you have with those in your class that you know and love. I think about um, the one year vacation Bible school when I uh, couldn't get anybody to be director of vacation Bible school. And so the leaders of the church came to me and said, Steve, um, would you consider being um, VBS director? And I said, wow, I've never done that before. They said, but I'll, but I'll, I'll say yes on, on one condition, that all of you join in and help me and really be involved in Vacation Bible School. Also, also had a really wonderful Vacation Bible School at that little country church. Um, and so everybody stepped up. We had a young man named Tom who was in charge of recreation. Tom had always been done recreation. Um, Going fine um, until one night, evening Bible, Bible study, Bible school, um, when it was pouring down rain. And, and Tom had always had the kids out to the side of the church to play dodgeball. Recreation, VBS was always dodgeball. Couldn't do that dodgeball when it was pouring down rain outside. So we came in and what are you going to do, Steve? What are we going to do, Steve? We can't do recreation outside. So I just thought, I thought all of a sudden, I looked over, there was a stack of bulletins over on a table up to the side. And, and I don't know why this came to me. I said, okay, uh, everybody, all the kids, grab a bulletin and get your teachers to help you make a paper airplane. We're going to have a paper airplane flying contest uh, inside the church. There's a balcony in that church. So we all went up to the balcony, and the kids loved it. They were flying those paper airplanes, you know, everywhere, and the kid won it and, you know, loved that. Uh, you know, sometime during that week that one of the uh, Pastor Parish Relations Committee members came to me and said, Steve, was that a good idea? <laughs> um, it was a good idea to have six-year-olds hanging out over that balcony to get another inch or two on their paper airplane. We had paper airplanes and the light fixtures and, you know, and everywhere else on the organ and everywhere else. It's, you know, how could I have done that? Uh, thank you for, I, I never did that again. Never did that again. Next year, Vacation Bible School. Um, also, um, 
nobody to be a director. So I, yeah, I'll do it again. Everybody help me out. So we had a farming theme for VBS that year. And uh, so we had a pro always had a program on Friday night after the uh, first four nights of Vacation Bible School. And um, we had a farming theme. And so I said, why don't we get a bale of straw and put up uh, on the altar area for the program? And so we did. Um, and it worked fine. You know, the kids did well. Grandparents, parents, aunts and uncles, everybody loved it and it worked fine. Um, that Saturday night, the, um, the custodian um, was in the church. Um, we'd taken a bale of straw out, trying to sweep up those little bits of straw. Let me tell you, <laughs> the little bits of straw on carpet in the altar, they don't sweep up very well. <laughs> so we had all the trustees and me down on our hands and knees on Saturday night before the Sunday morning worship, taking that little bits of straw out of the carpet. Trustee chair came and said, Steve, you ever going to do that again? <laughs> no, no, no. I learned my lesson on that. You see what I'm saying? They dared to speak the truth in love to me. Um, and, and, and the purpose of that was so that I could grow in my faith. So I could draw, gain a measure of wisdom um, to use in my pastoral ministry in the years to come. And, and I've, I've done that. I mean, uh, and, and so to this day, when anybody comes to me and tries to point it where I've fallen short, I, I listen. I listen because I know I need that, you know, um, to love our neighbor as ourselves. Jesus could not have been more clear. Love the Lord your God, everything you have, everything you are, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and all the prophets hang on these two commandments. I was thinking about this uh, this week, um, 1968, I was able to uh, go to California and saw the Golden Gate Bridge. And I just remember that suspension bridge. How many massive tons and tons and tons are held up by those suspension cables, you know? Um, everything hangs on those suspension cables. If the cables weren't there, it'd all crash. It, it, it would be worthless, wouldn't it? Kill people on the bridge, everything else. It all hangs on those cables. Um, same way for us. Same way for us. Everything hangs on loving the Lord, our God, with everything we have, everything we are, and loving our neighbor in the same way that we love ourselves, the same way that God loves us. Praise be to God this morning. Amen. Amen. This morning, it's God of grace, God of glory. Altar is open to you from the brim. Wisdom. 
Urbanus Courage uh, for the filling out of these goals. What is the goal, the kingdom's goal? It's to love heaven, love the Lord our God, everything we are, everything we have, and love our neighbors as ourselves. Repeat to God. Amen. 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 Thank you.